This is what I've been waiting for. It's the start of something super, super special. And I think it's the precursor to what I've been waiting for since Google Glass. A true mixed reality smart glasses experience. But hold that thought. The MetaQuest 3 is an incredible update to the lineup. And in my opinion, it not only offers the best virtual reality experience, but the best mixed reality experience available right now. So let's get stuck in with the nitty gritty of the design and the real differences between this and the old version. Now the general recipe is the same, but the whole package is a lot smaller. It's actually insane how much smaller the new device is. The change is similar to how I felt about the iPad original update to iPad 2. It's the difference between chalk and cheese. Remove the facial interface, and this thing is so small, it's unreal. How they've achieved this huge reduction in size has not only resulted in a better form factor, but has also increased the quality of the virtual reality experience. And the way they've done this is largely a result of the pancake optics that allow for higher clarity imagery whilst reducing the overall space needed. It also means that the display is much, much sharper from edge to edge. If you've ever used the Quest 2, you'll know that it becomes a little bit blurry the moment it slips out of position on your face. Well, now with this, it's pretty sharp. And you can thank the pancake lenses for that. Now, weirdly, you'd think that being almost half the size would mean it's slightly lighter, but it's actually a little bit heavier than the Quest 2, but only by about 10 grams. So the difference really isn't that noticeable. And although it's a smidgen heavier, the center of gravity is brought closer to your head rather than sticking out. So it's actually much more comfortable to wear. It's the same sort of thing, or the same principle at least, as the reason it's harder to hold a bag of sugar at arm's length than it is to hold it close to your body. Now on the subject of comfort, the strap they've included, where has it gone? It's probably in the bin, hold on. This. It's slightly different to the Quest 2. Instead of a single strap, it uses this kind of Y shape that's supposed to be for comfort and security. However, like the Quest 2, this is one of the most uncomfortable straps I've ever used. Honestly, I think the designer was inspired by 16th century torture devices rather than comfortable ergonomics. So, chuck that over there. Seriously, I'm not kidding. I used it for about 10 minutes before I immediately went on Amazon and ordered the Elite Strap with the battery. And with this in mind, the one thing that everyone should buy immediately when buying a Quest 3 is a replacement strap. Immediately. Don't even hesitate. If you're buying a Quest 3, the strap should be in your basket too. And I can indeed recommend the Elite Strap with battery simply because of the added comfort and the extra battery life that it offers. Now, along with the new torture device, uh, sorry, straps, they've also changed the facial interface as well. You can now extend the depth of it natively, which is done by pressing the two buttons on the inside. This makes it suitable for people who wear glasses without needing to change the interface like the previous Quest. However, by extending it, you do lose some of the 110 degrees FOV that you get when it's at its smallest, which you can't, obviously, if you're wearing glasses. So if you do need to wear glasses, but want the best possible experience, then you'll want to check out today's episode's sponsor, VR Wave. Now, VR Wave makes some incredible lens inserts for VR headsets, which allow people who need glasses to use them without wearing any. With the Quest, they simply drop onto the existing lenses inside the facial interface. And with the Quest 2, these were an absolute game changer and must have for those that needed to wear glasses, but wanted to experience VR in the same way they do with perfect vision. Now, VR Wave are soon releasing their lenses for the Quest 3, and you can pre-order them by going to the link in the description and filling out your correct prescription. And you even have the ability to add blue light or anti-glare filter to them too, which I think is incredible. Seriously, if you're a glasses wearer, go and take a look at VR Wave at the link in the description below. Or if you just want to add blue light filter, go take a look.
Now, with the design changes comes a bunch of new hardware specs, and the most obvious is the new camera array on the front, which includes dual color cameras and a depth sensor for full color pass-through, which is a huge leap up from the low resolution black and white pass-through of the Quest 2. This new ability is designed ultimately to create stunning mixed reality experiences, and this is one of the biggest new features of the Quest 3 that gets me the most hyped. Now, when setting up your play space, it now sends out this kind of mesh representation to scan your environment, and then lets you place things like desks and tables in virtual reality. Now, once you've done that, you're ready to play with some really cool mixed reality stuff. And one of the best representations of how mixed reality works is the introductory app that Meta have included, which lets you shoot these little furry aliens in your room. But as you miss, you end up destroying the walls of your room that you're in to reveal an alien landscape behind them. Look at all the bits on my desk. Oh, it is again now. Oh, oh, I just shot through my bloody wall. Oh my god, my room is getting destroyed. Look at it going under my desk. <laughs> That's so cool. Honestly, this is an excellent demonstration to show how mixed reality can be integrated into games for a really immersive experience. And the thing is, I actually prefer this mixed reality experience over just a solid VR title. For some reason, it feels way more immersive. And it also has the added benefit of making sure that I'm not going to punch a wall or kick a dog because I can actually see what's going on in my home environment at the same time as shooting aliens. Now, the resolution of the actual pass-through is okay. It's not crystal clear, and in darker environments it does become a lot more grainy. But I'm being super nitpicky here because it's an amazing achievement over the previous version and it makes the whole mixed reality experience extremely immersive. Put it this way, the pastor is probably good enough that you could drive your car whilst wearing it. You definitely shouldn't, but you probably could. Hmm. Now where you'll notice the impact of the resolution of the pass-through cameras not being the sharpest in the world is when you go and do things like use your phone or computer screen it's not quite high enough resolution to see the writing on the screens clearly. Also, it has to contend with the brightness difference of those screens and the surroundings. And actually, to be honest, it does this quite well and copes very well with the exposure differences. But talking about how good the mixed reality experience is, is all well and fine, except there's a problem. At launch, it doesn't have many apps or experiences that make the most of these features. And it's also not fully optimised either. Unfortunately, the two things that I was most looking forward to aren't widely available at launch. The first is dynamic occlusion, where the real-world physical objects, like this lamp, for example, can obscure virtual placements. Now, that won't be available until later this year. The dynamic occlusion is supposed to allow you to do things like see your hands in front of virtual screens, which would make it easier to navigate using the new interactive modes, the fact that you can tap buttons with your fingers. And as it stands, the Quest will actually just overlay a typical silhouette over your hands. But I actually find this kind of weird because it's like being able to see my hands that has a sort of ghost overlay that doesn't quite align with them perfectly. I find it sort of just trips my brain up a little bit. And the second thing I was really excited for, actually, was augments, where you can lock virtual things into a physical space, like a projected TV screen, for example. Now, that won't be available until 2024. I can't wait to try out these new features, and for more games and apps to kind of build in this mixed reality and this type of interactivity, especially now that this is standard. But that's not to say that there aren't any mixed reality experiences available right now. There, there are, but they're few and far between. But I will cut it some slack here. It's only been out for three days, so I'll give it a bit of slack. Now, not only is the mixed reality new and improved, the resolution and processing abilities of the Quest 3 are way ahead of the Quest 2. The 3 uses a Snapdragon XR2 chip, the same as in the Quest 2. However, this is a second-gen version, which gives around 50% more power. What that translates to in terms of performance is phenomenal. And paired with the resolution increase of nearly 30%, it's just an insane upgrade. I cannot praise it enough in terms of its performance, but there's another problem. 
Unfortunately, we have to wait for developers to update their apps for the new resolution and capabilities. And at the moment, that list is very small. Some of the most popular apps have already announced that they're working on updating and there are more updates daily, so they're coming. And obviously this isn't Meta's fault, but it's worth noting that not all apps will be as crisp, sharp, and graphically impressive as they could be or could have been if they'd been updated to the Quest 3 standard. The thing is, you'll notice almost instantly if a game hasn't been updated because it's just such a big difference. When the stuff that has been updated, things look so much clearer. The text in menus look no longer slightly fuzzy and it's fully readable, even at some distance away. It is a massive difference. With that said, despite developers dragging their heels with updates, the one thing that Meta need a clap on the back for is the fact that they've yet again made the Quest fully backwards compatible. Meaning the moment that you buy this, all of your content from previous Quests can be downloaded for free. And the entire back catalogue on the MetaQuest store will also run on the 3. They really do deserve a round of applause here for this because just look at the PSVR 2 and the utter mess that was the lack of backwards compatibility. Now the Quest will run any game, even if it hasn't been updated to the Quest 3 to make use of its increased power. But incidentally, this increase in power and new pass-through capabilities seems to have made the battery life slightly worse than its predecessor. My battery seems to run out after around two hours of playing, which seems quite quick, although this will depend on a huge amount of factors and what refresh rate, for example, you're playing at too. The solution, something I mentioned earlier anyway, is to throw away the devil's jock strap and buy the elite strap with battery. <laughs> As well as being miles more comfortable and less like a medieval torture device, it does give you around double the playtime and seamlessly integrates into the setup. Although, although what's super annoying is that the Elite Strap doesn't allow pass-through data. It's purely just a charging port on the back. This means that if you want to connect to a computer, you actually have to unplug the strap and plug directly into the device. Seems like a bit of an oversight, if you ask me, especially for those who play with this connected to a PC as a PC VR headset, for example. Just a really odd design choice. Anyway, there's another impact of the power increase, which most people won't really notice, but if you're sat in a very quiet room with no soundtrack coming from the headset, it makes quite an audible noise coming from an active fan inside the unit. Now, honestly, I'm probably being a bit harsh here because it's hardly noticeable, but... It's there, which is not something I noticed on the Quest 2. I guess with all of the changes to the form factor, they probably had to make the fan work overtime to keep it cool, given that everything is squished into such a small space. But aside from the actual headset, the controllers have also had a significant change, although I don't really like the change. Don't get me wrong, a lot of people will like the new Touch Plus controllers because they're lighter, slimmer, and no big bloody tracking ring. But these are even more angled and odd than the Quest 2. I mean, look at that. It's just bizarre. And for many games, it feels like a really weird angle to have the controllers at. With each iteration of the Quest, my hand has felt more and more and more angled. But now, look at this, it's mad. I mean, look. You don't hold a gun like that. You hold it like this instead. Look at this. The difference is, is, is quite stark. Look, my hand is pretty much straight there. And on here, it's like that. So gun games just feel really bizarre. In fact, holding anything feels really strange. Hmm. Of course, there's third-party attachments that you'll be able to get eventually. But it's certainly something that I've not been that happy about. The new haptics do feel great, however, and was immediately noticeable as quite a big improvement over the past. And what's also interesting is the way the Quest now tracks your index finger and the controller at the same time. This allows me to interact physically with virtual buttons with my finger whilst holding the controller at the same time, which is pretty cool. So at least they've got those two things right. So. With all of these advancements, what does it add up to in terms of cost? Well, you're looking at £479 for the headset. Now, on one hand, looking at this with a fresh pair of eyes, I think that it's an utter bargain. You're getting so much cool tech and potential with this device that £479 seems like an absolute steal. In fact, 
I wouldn't be surprised if Meta are actually losing money on this device at that price, but looking comparatively, the Quest 2 launched at just 299, which was jaw dropping. Interestingly, the Quest 2 jumped to 399 and is now back at 299 since the launch of this. So comparatively, it's a lot more of an ask than the Quest 2 was at launch. This is almost on par with current gen consoles, which I think might heavily impact the number of people using the Quest 3, but only time will tell for that one. I still think it's worth it, especially for those new to VR, because this will just offer you an experience that you're not going to be prepared for. And for those with a Quest 2, although that is still a respectable piece of kit that's still fully usable, with the changes to Quest 3, I think it will blow your mind equally as much as someone new to VR. But despite how much I love it, there's a few things that really annoyed me about the Quest 3. And the first is the resolution. Yes, I know I'm almost contradicting myself here a little bit, and I know I've spoken at length about how good the upgrade is, but I feel aggrieved that Meta didn't go that little bit further. Yes, it's perfectly usable, and it's a far cry ahead of the Quest 2, but just a tiny little bit more resolution, and they would have had an absolute winner for clarity here. I think that as little as maybe 20% more, it could have completely tipped the scales for me on this one. But another sore spot for me is that they chose not to use OLED, probably to keep the manufacturing cost down. But it's not much of a deal breaker, of course, but it means that you're not going to get that amazing image contrast because darker colours will always be illuminated. I think if they'd added a smidge more resolution and OLED, then the visual experience would have been perfect. Secondly, I'm starting to think that they're making the included straps uncomfortable on purpose, perhaps so that people spend money on buying extra straps, but possibly also to keep the cost down, possibly a combination of both. But what annoys me the most is that I know that they're fully capable of making a comfortable strap. Just look at the Quest 1, for example. That was great. They then hired some lunatic who's watched Man in the Iron Mask too many times, and it obviously shows. But my last and biggest gripe is the whole experience is not ready. This is not a finished product. Oh, okay, that might be a bit harsh, but they've already announced features that are key selling points, yet omitted them from launch. And with Meta, that's like trying to cure illness with hopes and prayers. We all know that Meta's promises are empty. And for those that disagree, I hope you're enjoying playing GTA San Andreas on your Quest 2. Hmm? Now, if they do make good on their promises, I think this is going to change the game completely because it already has as it is. In its current state, I think it's a total game changer. Despite a few small gripes here and there, which I'm probably being a bit nitpicky on, I think it's the best virtual reality experience that I've had so far. Untethered, high resolution, seamless, and not only that, it offers the best examples of mixed reality that I've ever experienced in my own home. If this device keeps getting better and better like the Quest 1 and 2 did over their lifespans, then I'm really genuinely excited to see what's next. And if you agree, do let me know in the comments below. I'll be sticking around for the next hour or so after this video goes live, so drop down to say hi, let me know what you think of the Quest 3 if you've already got one. I'll be replying to everyone down there for the next few hours. And if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. And as well, don't forget to check out VR Wave, some incredible guys that do some incredible kit for people who need glasses whilst playing VR. But other than that, guys, I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.